a world where freedom is a thing of the past and no one is outside the reach of Big Brother. A future of total surveillance and total control by the big tech billionaires and their shadowy backers. In June 2003, the Information Processing Techniques Office, the information technology of DARPA that had overseen the original ARPANET project in the 1960s, quietly posted a broad announcement to its website to request proposals for an ambitious new project, labelled BA number 03-30. This proposal information pamphlet requested proposals from developers to build an ontology-based subsystem called LifeLog that captures, stores and makes accessible the flow of one person's experiencing and interactions with the world. The idea which seemed somewhat fantastic in 2003 was that users of LifeLog would wear a device that would capture and record all of their transactions and interactions, physical movements, email and phone calls, and a variety of other information. The LifeLog would be presented to users as a standalone system to serve as a powerful, automated multimedia diary and scrapbook. But as the announcement goes on to reveal, the data collected would be used to help DARPA create a new class of true cognitive systems that can reason in a variety of ways. If it had gone ahead, LifeLog would have been a virtual diary of everywhere that its users went. Everything they did, everyone they talked to, what they talked about, what they bought, what they saw and listened to, and what they planned to do in the future. It immediately drew criticism as an obvious attempt by the government to create a profiling enemies of the state and even supporters of the plan were forced to admit that LifeLog could raise eyebrows if DARPA didn't make it clear how privacy concerns would be met. But then without explanation, the announcement was withdrawn and the project was dropped. DARPA spokesperson Jan Walker chalked the cancellation up to a change in priorities at the agency, but researchers close to the project admitted that they were baffled by the sudden stopping of the program. I am sure that such research will continue Under to be some other title, wrote one MIT researcher whose colleague had spent weeks working on the proposal. I can't imagine DARPA dropping out of such a key research area. The cancellation of LifeLog was reported by Wyatt on February 4, 2004. That very same day, a Harvard undergrad named Mark Zuckerberg officially launched the Facebook car. The first incarnation of Facebook, which collects vast amounts of data on its users, offering them the promise of a powerful, automated multimedia diary and scrapbook, but it has become more and more evident in recent years, using and selling that data for ulterior motives. But it is not just this interesting coincidence that connects Facebook to DARPA once again. The money that helped the Facebook go from a Harvard student project to a multi-billion user internet giant involved a relocation to Silicon Valley and copious injections of venture capital intelligence connected insiders. Facebook moved to Palo Alto, California in 2004 and received its first investment of $500,000 from Peter Thiel Kai. But the real money and the real interest in Facebook arrived in 2005. Dollar investment from Excel partners and an additional $1 million from Excel's Jim Breyer. Breyer, it turns out, had some interesting connections of his own. In next episode, Facebook connection with CIA.